Good morning and welcome to the first full weekday of our 21 days of prayer. We started our 21 days of prayer yesterday, but today it's Monday and I want to invite you to join me on a journey of every normal day becoming better than normal by spending some time in prayer. I hope today you're taking some time to start your day with some reflection in prayer and reading God's Word. And so to follow up on what we talked about on Sunday morning yesterday, I, I want to take us to 1 Peter chapter 1. Remember the line in 1 Peter opens up like this. Peter says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, that's an interesting thing because Peter wasn't always an apostle. An apostle is something that Jesus made him. Peter didn't have anything to do with that. In fact, if you remember the story of who Peter was before Jesus found him, he was a fisherman. In fact, what did Jesus say to him at the time? It's from Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read it to you. It says, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. This is an important part of Peter's journey because it begins Peter's journey with Jesus in a way where it's pretty clear Jesus calls the shots. It's pretty clear Jesus is the one who determines who you are and who you will be. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you into something different than you are. There's going to be aspects of who you are that will stay the same. Fishing is still going to stay the same. But where you fish, how you fish, and what you fish for are going to change completely. Jesus says, follow me, and your life is going to change completely. You, you see, when you follow Jesus, there is a clear line to be drawn between the life with him and the life without him. The life without Jesus means you just do whatever you want. You can just, you know, continue on doing whatever thing makes sense to you at the time. But the life with Jesus means a life towards a new destiny that he chooses for you. When I was a kid, I enjoyed reading these books called Choose Your Own Adventure Books. I've tried to get my kids into them because I still own them. I've tried to get my kids in them, and, and they don't seem to be all that interested in them because, you know, when I was younger, Choose Your Own Adventure Books were kind of like a video game where you're reading the story, and at the end of every page, it gave you an option of something you could choose, and then you could flip to another page in the book, and that would take you to that part of the story. Well, I should tell you how I read those books. I would read the books always until I got to the place where I needed to make a choice, and then I would make my choice, but I would keep my finger in the spot of the book where I had made that choice. And then I would read on to the next choice. And then I would keep my finger in that spot of the book. And so before long, I would have all of my fingers in all these different pages in the book. And I, if I ran out of fingers, I'd have to use bookmarks. But then once I re reached the end of the story, I would go back to the previous finger. And I would make the other choice. And I would read the rest of the book that way. Until I had read every possible option for the book. Now, you might say, just read it from left to right, but the books didn't work out that way, so you, you would have to go back and undo everything, which is what it really was. It was doing something, undoing it, and then doing the next thing, and then undoing that, and then doing the next thing. It was what we would call today fear of missing out, FOMO. It's this idea that there's something out there and I need to choose it for myself, or I might never find it. The power of choice is something that is really attractive to us. We love to have the ability to choose. Right after Katie was born, Jen and I had a little bit of money left over because we had to sell a house to pay for her hospital bills, uh, Jen's maternity delivery costs, and uh, some things with Katie. And, and so we sold our house in Colorado that we'd been renting out. We had a little bit of money, and so we decided we were going to use that money to get a new computer. When Jen and I were first married, we got a computer that was sort of given to us in parts, you know, monitor from 
one set of the family, computer from another set of the family, things like that. We, and so we, we had this new computer, but it was years later now, and it was time for us to get a new family computer, and I wanted to build one. I wanted to buy the different components and pieces and put it all together like a Lego set and build my own computer. And I've built a number of computers since then, but that was going to be like the first real computer I was going to build for family use, for Jen to use and for me to use. And we wanted to build it into this media system that would work like a DVR. This was back when, you know, DVRs were a new thing and no one actually knew what it meant to record video and have it later on a on a hard drive or something. Anyway, I wanted to build a computer and Jen wanted me to buy one pre-assembled and there was a big difference in price. But I remember we went to Best Buy and we were shopping around to see what they had. And it came down to this. If I built the computer and something went wrong, the only person to blame would be me. But if we bought a computer and something went wrong, we'd be able to blame HP or something along those lines. And it was the who can we blame that made the decision that we should buy a pre-built computer and that I shouldn't build one myself. The power of choice was what made me want to build the computer for myself. And I could choose all the little components. But the responsibility of choice made me decide to go ahead and buy someone else's assembled computer. When it comes to our lives, we want the power to choose, but it's hard for us to take the responsibility for those choices. And the truth is that the more we think about it, the more the choices we've made have been bad ones. We've made repeatedly bad choices. We've picked bad friends, we've done bad things, and. The responsibility for our choices has weighed heavily on us. And I think, in fact, that's one of the reasons why we want the power of choice in our lives. Because we've made so many mistakes, there's a part of us that wants to get it right, finally. There's a part of us that wants to correct the bad choices and get back to some good choices. There's a part of us that wants to somehow undo the past decisions by making some good ones. And maybe that's why we want to hang on to this power of choice like we do. But the thing that Peter wants you to know, it happened in his life and he starts his letter this way, is that if you have a relationship with Jesus, your ability to choose basically goes out the window because Jesus has a plan for your life. Jesus is the one who's going to make you into a fisher of men and not just doing whatever it was that you were doing before or whatever it is you think you could do now. Look at the next few verses. Peter says, To God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Those are the opening lines of Peter's first letter. Those are the lines where he is letting us know that we are his audience, and he's describing who his audience is. And we could talk about the people who are living in Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia and Asia and Bithynia. We could talk about all of them, but I want to highlight just four words for you. He says he's writing to God's elect, who are exiles, who are scattered, and who've been chosen. There are these four key words that Peter uses to describe you and me. He calls us elect, exiles, scattered, and chosen. Four words that form kind of a bookend. Elect on one side, chosen on the other. Those are the bookends. And in the middle, exiles scattered. See, there are two realities for a person who follows God. Reality number one, you've been chosen by God. Reality number two, you're a stranger in this world. You're an exile in this world. See, a lot of our problem is that we feel like aliens, strangers. We feel like people who don't fit in. We feel like misfits in this world. And our temptation, since we feel like misfits, our temptation is to try to want more influence, to want more power, to want more control, to want more ability to choose. 
there's just one problem. We're supposed to be exiles in this world. We're not supposed to have power in this world. We're supposed to be strangers and scattered in this world because we weren't chosen by this world. We were chosen by God. And maybe the idea that in this world you're a stranger and exile, in this world you're scattered, in this world you don't have any power, maybe that idea is threatening. And in fact, I think it should be. Because the truth of the matter is, <clears throat> this knowledge that we are chosen, I believe, should produce in us a lot of different feelings. But one of the feelings that it should produce in us is a proper sense of insufficiency. I am insufficient to deal with the things in this world. I am insufficient to deal with the problems that I face. I am insufficient to deal with the problems around me. I don't have the power. I don't have the authority. I don't have the ability to solve the problems I know. And you and I might use words like hopeless or helpless, but the right word we should be using is insufficient. Or maybe if you feel it deeply enough, desperation. See, I don't have the power to control my own destiny. I don't have the ability to make that level of choice. But you, do you know who does? Your Heavenly Father. The one who loves you. The one who chose you. The one who by His Spirit sanctified you. You. The one for whom Jesus gave His life. Listen, we are desperate, but we are chosen. As we enter into these 21 days, I want to invite you to be a person of desperation. I want to invite you to channel all of the frustration that you've had, all of the helplessness and hopelessness that you have had facing the circumstances of our world, whether they're political circumstances or sociological circumstances or anything else, I want to ask you to channel all of that desperation, all of that frustration, and bring it to your Heavenly Father who loves you because He chose you. And the fact that He chose you means that you don't have the power to choose the things that you want to choose in this world. But that's okay because God is more powerful than you or I. God is stronger than you or I. And the fact that He, ain't, he owns the power of choice is good enough for me. It should drive us to our knees. It should drive us to prayer. So channel the frustration into desperation and bring it to your Heavenly Father in prayer. Channel your desire for power into prayer and bring it to your Heavenly Father, asking for Him to move in this world. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for our church. Pray for our city. Pray for our leaders. But bring all of that frustration and desperation Bring all of the desire for power into prayer and bring it before your Heavenly Father who chose you, who loves you, and who's done far more for you than you and I could ever know. Let me start your time in prayer this morning. Let's pray. Lord, we recognize that we don't have the power to choose like we want to, but you have all the power that could ever be needed. Lord, I pray that over these next 21 days, you would cause us to be inflamed with passion for a closeness with you, and that you would draw us to a deeper awareness of your work in this world, a deeper desperation for you to be at work in this world. And we thank you for giving us this moment this morning to spend some time with you. Walk with us, continuing now and in the rest of the this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me encourage you, before you end your time here with God, spend some time reading his word. Spend some time on your own jotting down some thoughts, you know, prayer journal or something else, and spend some time in prayer, in desperation, asking for God and his power to be at work in your life today. God bless you.